it's going to obviously help build your relationship long term or you can take the lazy approach and put it all on your spouse to do you know take care of everything for you and guess what it's going to come with that hop on board the resentment train resentment. you don't know when it's going to stop it's not good <laughs>Everyone, welcome back. I'm Elizabeth. And I'm Carrie. And today we are going to be discussing something that is affecting people worldwide. And that is how to exist in this new normal, life under quarantine, especially married oh. and with children. <laughs> this presents a brand new set of challenges for everyone who has not had to be in this situation before. We have had the unique pleasure of, you know, living, working, well, sleeping, playing together. 24-7. Under one roof for the last two years. And we just wanted to share with you some tools, strategies that we learned along the way that have helped us transition into what we now call our new normal. We kind of learned by... Trial and error. Trial, a lot of error. A lot of error. <laughs> in trial. So we just wanted to share these strategies. They really worked for us in our marriage. We hope that you gain some value in them. And these are the three essential strategies that we have used. Number one, communication. Yeah. Obviously always critical and always important, but during these times, even more so. So, so important. And I think that, you know, it's obviously an important skill to have anyway. Hopefully, if you're invested in nurturing your marriage, there is this great communication between you and your spouse. But now, you have to dial that up. So, what do we mean when we say communication? When I started working from home, we had a lot of ups and downs, a lot of trials and error. Most of it was evolving around scheduling and yes. then understanding what the other person will, was capable of at certain times throughout the day, certain areas, and, and really just having that constant touch base about where you're at and what's going on with the kids. Again, it was, it was such a big shift, and Carrie had worked from home before, but when he started working from home 24-7, it was, a, again, it was a completely new normal. And things that you wouldn't have even thought would come up and be a thing became a thing. Oh, yeah. So let me give you an example of what that looked like for us. When Carrie started working from home, our whole lives kind of changed, right? I think a lot of people would think, oh, this is fun. You have a partner around now. They could split the housework yeah. and split the childcare. And that wasn't exactly true. And that was a really hard pill to swallow. I think, I, I do, I think in the beginning, you know, it was a tough transition, but I was definitely hard on Carrie just because, you know, again, like if, if there was a situation happening with the kids, right, if he heard one of them crying, if he heard in my voice that I was losing it and he wasn't running in, I did. I felt this kind of resentment, like you're right there. Why, why aren't you jumping in and helping? Well, in my meathead brain too, I'm not very good at doing more than one thing at a time. Right. So I am solely focused on what's in front of me and that's an email or a phone call or a presentation. And at that point, I think that I was expecting him to be wearing all hats at that time. But on my end too, it was, I kind of came into their space during their time. I'm strolling through the house. I'm you know going to get myself coffee and water and those things. And I'm, I'm, I'm in their space. And does so, it so slowly. So it looks effortful to walk that slow. <laughs> Moseying over, right? And in my mind, again, I go a mile a minute, but I'm like, there could be so many things that you could have gotten done in those five I'm minutes. I'm also bold it took you to walk to the fridge. I, I do, I was coming into their space and I had to have equal respect for their space as they did for me in my workspace. And getting through that and understanding what that looked like took some time. And that leads us into our first tip that we're gonna use. Plan the night before in terms of the schedule for the next day. Obviously your kid's schedule has to be similar. They have similar wake up times, similar feeding times, similar times to go to school, similar nap times. 
you have to plan around those, number one, but also plan around your work schedule and plan around if you're both working, both of your work schedules. This is a new normal for everyone. So me and Carrie have been doing something like this for two years, but it's evolved, right? So like when he first started working from home, I was a stay-at-home mother. I am still a stay-at-home mother now, but now I'm running my own business. So we sit down at actually the beginning of the week and we talk about time slots that I can give my clients so that I could be there for them, not have a kid possibly waking up from a nap and banging on the door. And he really does. He tries his best to accommodate me as much as possible. In the beginning, there were a lot of fights because of this. Yeah, I'd have a call that would run late and you know the kid had to get to school and typically I do the driving to school and I'm like texting her four minutes before. Once we started to get to a space, like he actually started sending me his schedule every morning. I knew, like if he had a call at 11.30 and said it was only gonna be 30 minutes, I always knew, <laughs> every time. And I'm like, it's only gonna be 30 minutes? Yes, absolutely, never. never. <laughs> well, and you see over time how that can be, if that's one-sided, right? If it's constantly yielding to me and my schedule and me not adhering to the expectations that I'm setting, you can see how that would start to build and become an issue. Which also brings in my point, your spouse is not a mind reader. And I know that a lot of times in our, because it's your closest relationship, right? It's your best friend. You're feeling sad, you're, these resentments are starting to build, and you're like, why don't you see this? You see this, we're getting, we're getting snippier with each other, like there's obviously this big problem, what is wrong with you? An example I like to give is for a while, and this is when I had, well, this is actually when I had um, postpartum depression. So Carrie, and by the way, he was truly, I mean, just so amazing during that No, period. but you woke up and battled every day. It was inspirational on my end as well, just to see you Stop. fight through it. You better. You better. <laughs> I love you. When I was dealing with this, Carrie went out of his way to, first of all, not only take on, I mean, just so much on his plate. He was working a full-time job. He was there for the kids. He was an emotional support system to me. We were going through some really tough family separations with our family. And yet, every weekend, he would still come in with this, like, beautiful, fresh bouquet of flowers. And it was really great. And as things started getting better, the flowers were stopped. They kind of weaned out. Maybe now it was every once every two weeks. So every time he would come back from the store, the food would come home and I'm helping unpack and I'm like, where are the flowers? Where are the flowers? And I start building this resentment. And then the resentment builds into like, why, why doesn't he love me anymore? <laughs> and it got to a point where we had a huge blow up about it. And he was like, well, why didn't you just tell me that? And I was like, what? What do you mean? Why didn't I just tell you? I mean, you should know. And he was just kind of looking at me, and I was like, I didn't say it at the time. <laughs> I was gonna be like, you're totally right. Definitely not how that argument ended. <laughs> but there was some soul searching after, and actually thinking like, you know what? You're right. I didn't express that to you. And I basically said to him the next morning, I was like, yeah, I just gotta be honest. It makes me feel really loved and happy when you bring me flowers every week. Done. Done. And it doesn't make it any less special, by the way. I think that, you know, people always think that, they, that people should just have this naturally in them. That's not how, certainly when you're married now for nine years, we've been together 12 years, we have two children. It's, it's not unromantic to have these conversations. Things are gonna come up along the way and it is your job and your job only to communicate that with your spouse as they are coming up. And this could be uncomfortable conversations, but I think much more uncomfortable when you have a fight about what seems like something so small and your wife starts like crying, like, why did you forget the sugar again? You're like, this is not about the sugar. <laughs> yeah, not sugar. It's important that you establish a schedule, you communicate that schedule with your partner, but on the other end, you gotta be flexible as well. Right, and Cut, recognize yeah. that you are a team, right? Nobody, this is not a winner or a loser in this. So if you're sitting there and you start getting stubborn about like, well, I'm doing more here and more there, try to figure out how important that is. Because right now, this is all you have. It's me, Carrie, and our two children. So we need to do everything we can to make sure it runs as smoothly as possible and you know that we maintain and, and continue to be best friends. 
Tip number two, quality time. And I know it seems awkward. You guys are spending all your time together. Right. Why do we need quality time? What do you mean quality time? <laughs> We're around each other all the time. So quality time is different than just time spent together. It's actually more important more now important. to set aside time with you and your spouse to have what we call quality time. This is something that I, you know, I, I discuss with my clients and the general rule of thumb, because I think for a lot of people, just the transition into motherhood, whether it's transitioning to two, whether it's the husband goes back to work, it's a really good idea to try to plan two date nights a week. I know you're thinking like date nights where? Like where are we gonna go? These are gonna be these inside dates, which I mean, again, I kind of love because I'm you know, a bit of a recluse. This is actually kind of perfect. <laughs> Once we put the boys down, we take a second to, I think, decompress from all the noise and all the sensory stuff throughout the day. Alone time. Alone time. And then within 20 minutes, you know, we come back and, you know, have a glass of wine and, you know, either just or talk. Four. <laughs> try to use that time with your spouse to connect and remember why you started this family in the first place. And hopefully that's because you were super in love and you were like, you know what we should do? Like we, we've been just so in love and it's so amazing. Like let's have- We should make little ones of us. We're so fun. Like it's gonna be so much yeah. fun to have like little Elizabeth and Carrie's walking yeah. around. Um, We should have read some of that. <laughs> little us is a, is a lot. Yeah, incessant. They're incessant. I just don't understand. I'm like, why? Why is little me so annoying and never stops talking? <laughs> Go back to a time where you guys talked about stuff that wasn't your kids, work, or schedules. This is a time to really touch base and just like have fun. Mario Kart, uh, look at places we can't afford to go to. Oh my on God, the that is one of our Plan vacations that we can't afford to go on. We one day. One arts day. and crafts, clay, painting, coloring, the sex dates count. And that's what no, I plan. No, and actually that brings up a good point. That's not what we mean by quality time, okay? If the quality, quality for me. If the quality time goes well, hopefully it will lead to that. Um, because that is very important too. You know when you don't have sex for a little while and it's like it's building up, then like at that that day after you have sex, it's so good. You feel like you have so much energy, you're nicer to your spouse. It's really important. You just like release all that anger. Well, I do. <laughs> if it's good. <laughs> so I think when people ask me what I do, and I'm like, I'm a self-care coach for moms. They're like, hmm, what is, what is that? So as a self-care coach for moms, what that means is, especially as mothers, it's really hard sometimes to be like, what am I doing for myself? And then you'll find yourself running on empty. You know, with my second, and we'll be talking about this, you know, in, in, in lengthy episodes, but after the birth of my second son, I experienced severe postpartum depression and anxiety. And this was something that just completely, I mean, tran <laughs> it, was a really, it was a really hard time. There was a time there where I was like, I just, am I, am I always gonna feel like this? And so, yeah, there was absolutely a hormonal component, a chemical component. So once I sought that uh, medical intervention and w once I started seeking therapy, there was an improvement, but that wasn't a cure-all. I had to really dive deep and be like, what are some changes that I can make that are going to positively affect my life? Um, so what self-care looked like for me was waking up in the morning before my children. I realized I needed to wake up you know, 20 minutes before them, sometimes it's 10, um, just to, you know, get a good start to my day. Whether that is doing some light stretches, prayer, meditation, writing in a gratitude journal, just to set my intentions for the day and start my day with a grateful spirit. When you've got kids yelling and you've got work stuff on your mind and, and deadlines to meet and, and your spouse is stressed. You're, you're basically like a, a car running on empty. I've heard, by the way, that Luke has had to tell you when to start filling our gas because you let it go empty 
It's like that Seinfeld episode. For too episode. long. You ever seen it where he's like, we're, we're past the E. We're yeah. past the E. Being a mom and being like, you know what? Yeah, it's re- it's really hard to it's lose lot. your identity. Your whole identity is now wrapped up in your children and your husband. And even if you have a job, it's so important to like love yourself, like self-love, self-care. Because if you're if you're not doing that, if you're not touching base, then what's the point? Like, what's the point? If you're going to bed every night, or if you're waking up every morning dreading waking up, you gotta change, you gotta make a change. And he just stepped up in so many ways, and I'm really grateful that he did that. And I, I think without without taking that self-care and without having a partner that supported it so much, I, you know, again, I'm not sure that I would have, um, that I would have been in this space. Oh yeah, absolutely. For me, you know, I, I ran into that as well at some point. I, Certainly after she went through everything that she went through, yeah. I think there was a decompression period. I got into this really negative spiral when I was home all the time of just terrible nutrition, just constantly snacking. That's hard trap to fall into, especially when if you, you have children. Yeah. When everyone's like, you should eat really healthy. It's like, I don't think you understand. A salad takes forever <laughs> to make, it, right? It's, you get the chopping, so it's much easier wash it all and also a little more delicious to reach in a bag of pretzels eat my kids mac and cheese i mean here i am making the salad it's not as delicious i actually have i think the appetite of like a eight-year-old boy (laughs) (laughs) that's pretty accurate like i remember someone being like have you ever tried to go gluten-free i'd be like why would i live what would be the purpose of living without carbs they're like no it's fun you have zucchini lasagna I don't want that. I want delicious white pasta, okay? This is a time where you have to wake up every day and force yourself and do the right things to be the best version of yourself. It's a time to actually be more proactive. Absolutely. It's a time to to spend more time with your family and more time growing your relationship. The essential three, communication, quality time, and I think most importantly, self-care. Take care of yourself, realize your triggers, try to do a lot of, I mean, we have the time, (laughs) try to do a lot of self-work during this time. We learned these by a lot of trial and error, right? Like we didn't read a book. Um, These are things we learned through some really hard fights, some really hard moments. But these, these things were so essential and helped us grow so immensely both as individuals and as a couple, as parents, friends. Um, and we just truly, more than anything, hope that you know that you will gain some value in, in trying out some of these strategies yourself. Until next week, we hope everyone stays safe, healthy, sane, and we look forward to seeing you guys back here next week. Bye. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for more videos. <laughs>